On January 11th, 2016, the normally silent Facebook page for EA Sports NCAA Football posted this. On one hand, it was pretty clear that EA was celebrating their anticipation for the NCAA Football National Championship, pitting the Alabama Crimson Tide versus the Clemson Tigers, scheduled for that day. On the other hand, many fans of the franchise, breathless with anticipation for a new NCAA game, saw it as a monster tease. Some even accused the account of trolling. The last NCAA football game by EA was made in 2013, and the discontinuation of the beloved franchise was one that was met by fans with frustration, anger, and confusion at the future of all student-driven sports games. Is there still life left in the future of NCAA games, or has all hope flatlined? Welcome back to Geek History, a series where I tackle geek subjects with the Hail Mary of knowledge, the offensive line of humor, and maybe, just maybe, the pass interception of love? Football is something of an interest to me. I enjoy watching the game. I never played, as I was far too busy organizing my books into genre for the 400th time. But the older I got, the more I found myself gravitating to an enjoyment of the sport. It didn't override my bigger passions in life, but it was still something I could really enjoy. Something I liked that I wouldn't memorize the names of all the players for, you know? And while I like the NFL, I found that I was truly drawn to college ball, which confuses a lot of people. Shouldn't one be basically the same as the other? It's the same damn game, after all. But the more I learned about the subject, the more I'd find out how many people, including bonafide jocks, felt the exact same way. For a lot of us, college football has more excitement, more passion. These aren't professional athletes with million dollar salaries. These are kids trying to balance a college education with their devotion to sports, possibly with the ultimate goal of being picked up by the majors. On top of that, well, a lot of us went to college. Watching football games was a genuinely active thing to look forward to in the fall, and I was a theater major for God's sakes. The marching bands, the pageantry, it's stuff like that that can make a person who's never seen a Steelers game in their entire lives go out and scream themselves hoarse for the Pitt homecoming game. I'm not saying it's likely, but it definitely happens. And when the fall is over and spring has arrived, what do you want to do? do to get that old nostalgic feeling back, particularly if you don't like other sports, or people for that matter. Some of us picked up the latest edition of EA's NCAA football and played our way out of the summer. It's the closest some indoor kids can feel to being a jock. A month of playing these games non-stop. I mean, sure, we could be actually playing pickup games of football with our friends in the sunshine and fresh air, but fuck that. Enjoy your endorphins and cardiovascular exercise, losers. The NCAA football series was really something special. Beyond the ability to choose from scores of college teams, many versions allowed you to create your own school, or create your own player, and role-play your way through balancing academics and athletics. And when you finally graduated, you could transfer that character to EA's Madden and try to get picked up by your favorite pro team. It's definitely that level of individual player options that drew gamers of every stripe to NCAA, even those of us who barely knew how to throw a spiral. Like many sports games, NCAA came out year after year, sometimes to applause, and other times to lukewarm ho-hums, criticizing when the game didn't offer anything new. In this way, sports games are ultimately the same as any other franchise of games. Sometimes the sequels are brilliant reimaginings, and sometimes you get a $60 beer coaster. But in 2013, that yearly tradition met its end. No more NCAA football would be coming from EA. This was three years after the last NCAA basketball game by EA had hung up its jersey. And while the basketball discontinuation had more to do with market forces, it would ultimately affect the end of its football cousin in an unexpected way. Or maybe it was expected. The reason had certainly been brought up on more than one occasion. You see, there's been controversy surrounding student athletics for quite some time now, particularly when it comes to larger schools and more popular athletic programs, because there's a ton of money in college sports. According to Business Insider, the 231 NCAA Division I schools brought in 9.15 
billion in revenue in 2015 from their sports programs alone. And that brings a lot of conversations to the table. One of the more enduring controversies surrounds the idea that some academic university programs seem to take a back seat to athletic programs. But perhaps the biggest argument arose from pay. Imagine you're a college athlete. You spent your entire life playing this game and look at the NCAA as a way to get some attention towards a career going pro. So one day you're looking to take a day for yourself, just veg out and play a new video game. And what could be better and more meta than the latest NCAA football? And just for shits and giggles, you choose your own team. And would you look at that? There's you. EA created a character on you. Same name, same number. Hell, they even got your hometown and favorite flavor of off-brand toaster pastries on here. And after the novelty wears off, you think to yourself, how much money have these guys at EA made? And don't I deserve a piece of that pie? You go to your coach and he says, nope, you're not an employee here, you're a student. You're part of a volunteer organization and NCAA can sell your likeness to Electronic Arts if that's the deal they've arrived at. To which you might respond, well, are you a volunteer coach? Are you doing this for free? To which the coach would probably respond with, fuck no. Listen, the coach says, we gave you a scholarship. That's sort of like being paid. But you can't buy groceries or pay your rent with a scholarship. And that's essentially the argument that's been going on for years now when it comes to college athletics and payment. Say what you want about the amateur status of players in the college sports scene, there is a huge amount of money in that industry, and basically none of it goes to the player themselves. And the argument that a student should at least be paid for his likeness is what the former basketball player Ed O'Bannon brought to the courtroom in 2009. Ed O'Bannon's a retired power forward who was a key player in leading the UCLA Bruins to a win during the 1995 NCAA Basketball Championships. He went to play a couple of seasons for the New Jersey Nets and even had a pretty successful career playing for some Greek and Polish professional basketball teams, which I didn't even know was a thing. The story goes that O'Bannon happened to see his 1995 UCLA likeness being used in one of EA's NCAA basketball games. In 2009, he and several other former players filed suit against EA, the NCAA, and the collegiate licensing company, arguing that a student is due compensation for his or her likeness being used for commercial gain. I've always been one to wonder why former student athletes weren't compensated for their games on television, said O'Bannon. The NCAA is making money off of DVDs and old reruns with people like me in it. Hey, I'm no longer in college. Something's wrong here. I saw my likeness on a bit on a basketball video game. I said, you know, wow, they're still making money off of my, off of my likeness, off of my face, off of the things that I did 15, 20 years ago. And I just, I just, I thought that that was just. Uh, it's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. O'Bannon would ultimately be joined by legendary players like Oscar Robertson and Bill Russell, which lent a real weight of personality to their argument. This was a pretty big deal, seeing as it was a huge step forward in the notion of directly paying players, even if they wouldn't be students when the payment occurred. It was far from student athletes getting an annual salary, but it opened the door to a number of options, including increased compensation for collegiate room and board, and even trusts in the student's name waiting for them after graduation. The argument was that not paying a student for their likeness, even after they've ceased to be a student, violated antitrust laws. Antitrust laws being the laws and regulations put in place to make sure that businesses are conducted fairly to consumers. And in June of 2013, the judge ruled in favor of O'Bannon, effectively increasing the ways that a student athlete could be compensated for playing college ball. But by that time, EA and the collegiate licensing company had sort of pieced out of the suit. They took a long look at all the students and schools that they'd represented over the years and essentially said, uh, hey, we don't care for courtrooms. How about we settle our part of this to the tune of a cool 40 million? And that's what they did. The student, depending on the school he played for and the amount of time spent there, could expect to get up to $5,000 of that money, although most got far, far less. Why is that? 
Well, remember how I said before that the NCAA Division I teams brought in over $9 billion in 2015? Well, it's not like that amount was spread evenly over universities. The Hawaii Warriors are Division I, but they're not going to bring the same amount of spectators, merchandising, and TV rights as, say, the Crimson Tide. So the percentage that one school owes their athletes is going to be very different from what another owes. And a lot of people have argued that this is sort of a shame that it came down to all of this over just a very measly sum of money. Others argue, however, that it's more about the student and his or her right to compensation where their likeness is used. Whatever your argument, Electronic Arts decided that the juice just wasn't worth the squeeze ultimately, and ended their NCAA football series in 2013 with NCAA Football 14. Because that makes sense. They had already shuttered NCAA basketball some years later, but this lawsuit sure as hell didn't tempt them to reopen that Pandora's box of litigation and likenesses. So where does that leave us? Well, since that first cock tease in January of 2016, there haven't been any definite rumblings. That hasn't stopped fans from demanding updates on a second-to-second -second basis, however. Hell, even Kirk Herbstreet and several other players and coaches have expressed a longing to see their favorite game franchise return to their living room consoles. So, will we ever see a new NCAA football game again? It certainly seems possible. There are some of the other games out there that attempt to recreate that collegiate feeling, but without access to the actual franchises, it just isn't the same. And therein lies the major problem. If EA or any other developer is supposed to bring NCAA back to the video gaming world, they're going to have to sort something out with a massive swath of teams. Look at it this way. The NFL has a total of 32 teams. And with the paychecks and massive egos of some of the players in there, I'm sure that the contracts to keep the Madden franchise coming out year after year are filled with so much fine print they look like a Gideon Bible. Now expand that to NCAA Division I football teams. As it stands, that's 128 teams and universities, and while EA's games haven't always included every single team, part of the appeal of college football is your ability to root for a team that you closely identify with, and the chance that they'll alienate you and your favorite team is something that EA didn't really want to take the chance on. In the past, EA used a blanket licensing agreement to make it happen. However, after the recent lawsuit, my guess is that it won't be quite so cut and dry next time. And that's a lot of contracts to have to get signed to make this miracle happen. Does that make it impossible? No. Hell, there are a couple of indie developers who are trying to resurrect college football video games by themselves without EA's help. The development of the so-called Gridiron Champions by Immaculate Vision Gaming has been fairly hush-hush on the details, but the developers have said that they might start with smaller division schools to keep the game grounded in something that people can relate to. And that makes sense, considering the cost of a licensing agreement with just a handful of some of the bigger schools would empty a smaller company's pockets faster than Charles Bukowski at happy hour. So it's very up and down even if indies are interested in filling the void. EA seems optimistic, though. In an interview with IGN last year, EA executive Peter Moore had this to say about the future of NCAA video games. You know, you just, in the end, had to say, we can move this dev team to do something else that we can have a very clear future that we know. Think of dev cycles. They're, 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 they're not just like we start and then we finish in the same year. They're two, three years out. Sure. It was an unclear future for us, and so, we, we unfortunately, and it was a really sad day, I have to say, we just can't do this anymore. Um, and, you know, and, and, and one day I know we'll be back. But until then, the college football fans of the video gaming world will have to watch and wait. And I suppose we could play a little Madden in the meantime. Would you like to know more? A lot of you who've watched my show before know that I really do enjoy games of basically every stripe, but you also might have 
just figured out somehow that sports are not exactly something that I always feel like an authority to speak on. So for that reason, I had a lot of help with this one, despite the fact that I find this to be a fascinating topic. If you're looking to find out more about the Ed O'Bannon versus NCAA case, I would definitely check out some of the greats, obviously, ESPN, Forbes, and SB Nation all provided a lot of insight, not just into this court case, but into the whole idea of paying students in general. It's a really contentious topic, and frankly, it's one that I can see points on either side. So it's a really, really great opportunity for me to take a look and think about it and expand my brain. And I like expanding my brain. It's one of the things that I do. It's one of my hobbies. In addition to that, if you're looking for a YouTuber who covers this sort of thing on a very regular basis, I would highly recommend Sports Gamers Online if you haven't already checked him out. This guy's got his ear to the ground on just about everything that has something to do with athletic-related video games. It's damn impressive. Now, this has been my third geek history so far, and... I just love how much everyone seems to be enjoying them. And frankly, recently I've seen a sudden influx of subs, uh, and it's clearly come from my first geek history on D&D and the Satanic Panic. Uh, welcome to all of you if you're brand new to my channel. Uh, I'd like to extend an invite for you to let me know in the comments below any topics that you would like me to cover here on Geek History. I'm here to keep you happy, and if it's something that I know even a little bit about, I'll do my very best to cover that. That's what I'm here for. It's what I do. I'm having so much fun doing it, and I'm always eager to see what it is that you guys want to talk about, because it is a discussion to me. So feel free to get involved down in the comments below. Offer your own insights. Be nice. And otherwise, if you enjoyed this in any way, please like or consider giving me a subscribe. It's all you have to do. Just a quick little subscription. It's just a tap of the finger. Just a tap of the finger and you're there. Oh, lordy, you're going to have some fun with me. I promise you. I promise you. Thanks again for watching. And in the meantime, in between time, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, buddy, don't sink a little drinky. Daddy gets sad and blue. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, snickety-doo. La-di-da-di-da-da-da. -da -da -da.